Okay, the next problem that we did on Friday, also a little bit uh, challenging for a couple different reasons. Uh, to begin with, as always, we're going to attempt by drawing a picture here. So we got a ranger going along in his uh, truck. I'd like to say that my drawings in class are better, but I know they're not. So, uh, and then up above in front of him, he sees uh, a deer. There we are, that's my deer, and the deer is 65, I believe, meters in front of him. Uh, yeah, I should probably read this problem. The ranger in a national park is driving at 56 kilometers per hour when a deer jumps in the road 65 meters ahead of the vehicle. After a reaction time of t seconds, the ranger applies a brake to produce an acceleration of negative 3 meters per second, and that should have a squared on it. I don't know why it doesn't. Uh, what happens, uh, what is the maximum reaction time allowed if the ranger is to avoid hitting the deer? Uh, a couple of things to understand about this. When you read these problems, you have to be very careful, okay? First of all, it says after t seconds of reaction time, then he applies the brakes. So a lot of people want to put this negative 3 and the 65 meters for the whole time, assuming that he is braking the entire time. But it very explicitly says right here that he is not accelerating the whole time. There's a certain time segment here where he is not accelerating. Or in other words, he's traveling at a constant V. Over here is when he's braking. All right. So let's write down the variables for each section of this. Because 65 does not apply over here, and it does not apply over here. It's the total. Okay, so that's what you could see right here. So you've got to be careful when you read these. With a constant velocity, I only have, as I showed in the last video, three variables to write down. V, delta x, delta t. Now you can get away with writing all five that we have been, but three of them, V, I, V, F, and A, are all just going to say what this will tell you in one line. Plus the fact it's kind of confusing because most of the time you need to find three of those five in order to solve this problem, where in this case you need to have two of three. And over here, when I'm breaking, I'll of course go back to my five kinematic variables because we are in fact accelerating. Now I'm going to fill in whatever I have uh, available to us. I have 56 kilometers per hour, and as many of you noted, because of the kilometers per hour, I am going to have to convert that. So I'm going to let you do that on your own. I'm not going to ha show a video for that. There's videos for that in Chapter 1. Uh, the answer is 15.56 meters per second when he's traveling at a constant velocity for this displacement right here. That will also be the amount of time that we're actually looking for here at the end. The problem, of course, is that I don't have two of the three variables. So whenever I'm stuck like this, it's usually very difficult to see what the answer is when you're first starting off. So what you want to do is you want to try to figure out <coughs> what all you have available to you before attempting to solve it. So I'm going to come over here to my braking section and find that velocity initial is 15.56 meters per second as well. Velocity final zero meters per second because it says he is going to uh, avoid hitting the deer and to avoid hitting the deer his final velocity is going to have to be zero. His braking in this case because it says right here is negative three meters per second squared. It's actually point zero but I'm not going to be too picky about that right now. So this is what I have in front of me. That Now what you have to do is you have to do problem solving. Now that you've placed everything in front of you in order to fi uh, figure out the problem, now we need to do problem solving. In other words, I have three things over here. What can I get, and how might that help me? Now, the trick to this, and the thing that would actually take you some time to realize, is that displacement right here is what you want. And the reason why you want it is because that's going to be this distance here. Let's even use a different color for a second here. All right, this distance right here. Now, of course, while that's not going to solve my entire problem, I hope I get the red pink again. While it's not going to solve the problem, if I have this and this, I'll be able to figure out displacement and therefore my final answer. So let's figure out what this displacement is with some simple... I did get the red pink. There we are. Kinematics plus 2a delta x. Very careful to cancel the right one. That's zero. Subtract this over, vi squared divided by 2a. 
All right, I've done this a fair amount of times, so I'm just going to assume you know how to plug in here, and I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is 3.33 meters. So now I'll take the full 65, subtract meters, subtract 40.33 meters, and I'll get that the displacement here is 24.67 meters. So 24.67 meters. Now the rest of the problem is very simple. Again I use the constant velocity equation. By again I mean I did that in the last problem. If I solve for time I will get that displacement is divided by velocity or 24.67 meters divided by 15.56 meters per second and my time will end up being 1.59 seconds or pretty close to depending on how you round it. Alright, that's that problem.